19 keys and it's just a high level conversation. But just the idea that we live in a, 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 a world where we have to retrain our thoughts and our ideas towards things. So we're going to eat something that's flavorful of sugar and, you know, it, it, it's palatable to our taste, but it's not good for our body. Correct. You understand me? And so you sometimes make correlation with because this is so flavorable, this is good, therefore, and your mind is tricked like, damn, this is good for me because it's making me feel, feel good, good because of the endorphin rush. And that's what we get, that's what comfort we get ourselves food. cased up at. Yeah. That's what we call comfort food. It becomes a comfort food because, again, it goes back to your emotions. Everything is tied to everything, spirituality, emotions, so you want to feel good through this food because it's giving you some type of rush. Right. Mm -hmm. But then, if you check this out, not only does the food give you rush, but then guess what? We're eating all these sweets around these holidays. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're eating sweet potato pies. We're eating pound cakes and red velvet cakes. Mm. Everybody's depressed. Mm. Right? Everybody in the family's depressed. And <laughs> it's winter time. Okay, everybody's depressed. But now you have these sweet foods that make you feel good. And then you go to Thanksgiving dinner at Mama House or Big Mom's house. Which is a sound right? surrounded around. So now you feel good and you eat this food that makes you feel good. Mm. So now you're addicted to it. Right. Right. On all levels. Everything, all everything levels. has to come together. You want the eggnog, which is nasty. <laughs> uh, you want the eggnog. You got to have your gingerbread, man. You never want you to overspend. You understand me? Mm -hmm. You and the, you and the family gossiping about each other, but it's great. Everything is bad. But you you need that concoction to make it feel like the holiday. Exactly. Correct. The holidays is the most toxic concoction created. Mm. You understand me? You because gotta tell us, man. For, for, I mean, everybody knows that the holidays are toxic. Most people hate to come. You understand me? But also because the family dynamic has been destroyed and. Right now, it's just more so about capitalism than it is about the family actually coming together and being happy, right? Because if that was the case, we would come together all year long. Yeah, I don't need. Why, why do right now? You understand me? It doesn't have to be Christmas for your family to sit down or Thanksgiving and eat. Y'all want to gift each other something because you love each other. You can do that at any time if you really love each other. Because you can't tell me that you love somebody because you're doing it because of holiday. That ain't love to me. You know what I mean? That's that's indoctrination correct right to a holiday ritual correct but if you love somebody it's like you in a relationship where i'm gonna wait till just your birthday to give you something mm -hmm. no nah, that ain't special right if you did it because it was just tuesday and you thought about the person that's love that's a connection mm -hmm. for sure right so for me the holidays actually show the lack of love that we have for each other mm -hmm. because these are not things that we would normally do on our own mm -hmm. right we're doing because they are ritualistic Right. Mm -hmm. And we have been indoctrinated towards them and now they are traditional. Mm -hmm. So it's like eating healthy and eating unhealthy can be rituals and they can be traditional. One of the things I wanted to talk about was also the tradition of breakfast and the myth of bre <laughs> breakfast. Right. Because you put out a good video talking about, you know, what we eat for breakfast and how bad it is for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, break, break it, <laughs> breaking the fast with the pig's booty. Why are you breaking the fast That's with it. the pig's booty? Right? And, and but like you said, indoctrination because what they're saying, America's runs on Duncan. Yeah. Right? You you waking up, you gotta run on sugar. You gotta run on baked treats. Yeah. Right? On, on caffeine. And on caffeine. And everything you eat is dead on that plate. So now you're indoctrinating yourself like, hey, I need me a fix in the morning with some caffeine. And if you if you're addicted to caffeine, that just lets me know that your endocrine system is not uh, working properly because you need something to stimulate you. Mm -hmm. Right. So I remember being addicted to caffeine for surely. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I needed when I was working a job, I needed to drink. You know, uh, I had to have that double shot espresso in the coffee. Mm. You know what I'm saying? With a little bit of nutmeg, half and half creamer, half and, and some half. brown sugar. <laughs> Ooh, with maybe a little dash of cinnamon. You understand me? And when you hit, it gives you that spike of energy, mm -hmm. right? So, and, and don't get me wrong, you can utilize caffeine as a nootropic. Mm -hmm. So, your brain starts to be stimulated and mm -hmm. you can think now, right? So, but then when you add the sugar and then you add the type of uh, a caffeine that you have, especially with the kind that you get from like a Starbucks, you're not getting like the Kenyan coffee Correct. or the Blue Magic from Jamaica or I don't drink coffee anymore. It's but a storm. It's a storm this, of a concoction. Yeah. It, it, and, and it's the most addictive drug, you understand me, that we have. So what got me off of it was, number one, 
I feel like anything that you want to change, you should study. So I started to study what was happening, Correct. right? Correct. And I realized that, you know, it's a it's, it's, if if my energy starts off low here, right? I start think about yo, I want more energy. So now my brain is driven towards that, and there's a spike. So now I'm driven towards that spike of energy. Correct. Right, and that's my addiction right there. I wake up and then I have a vision towards it, and I have to be driven towards that vision every single day. And only the caffeine can give me that thing. It's a hit, right? So <laughs> instead, when I replaced it with gold water through fasting, and what happened was is I woke up with energy already, so I didn't need a spike. Mm. You understand me? And so my brain was already clear. It was already working. So that mm. addiction that I had and that need that I had for it disappeared, right? And so that habit disappeared automatically. Got you. It, it, it almost felt magical. You understand me? But I just realized, like, no, I was my, my brain was foggy. Mm -hmm. I needed energy. Caffeine was providing that hit. When I wake up and my brain is clear and I'm already energized, I don't need anything to supplement. All I want to say is, Grizzy, mm -hmm. there's no excuse for anybody because if you can go to prison and remain vegan, mm. anybody can do it. Damn. Yeah. Listen, that was a journey right there. You know, for me, um, when we made our transition, like she said earlier, I ended up going to the feds. I did 18 months in the feds for something I had did four years prior. Mm -hmm. That's how they played. And it was at the turn of our life and our lifestyle. Like, I mean, I'm in my history books. I hadn't been so deep in my history books in almost 15 years. And now I'm in my history books. I'm learning. I'm, I'm picking up all this new information. I'm like, okay, well, the change is coming. And then boom. Prison comes. I had two options to either allow that to bring me back to who I used to be or push me forward to who I wanted to be. And I took it as, yo, this is the time that I have to even go even harder on my chain. So in them cells, in that, in, in that six by six cell with, with my celly, I'm in there talking about veganism all day. I'm like, yo, this is how we got to eat. I'm in there polling, asking questions like, yo, what are you going to do with your diet? The, when she originally came to me with the idea of the brand, I was in prison. And I said, hey, we're going to go with it. Let's go with it. It's our lifestyle now. So all I could do from a phone was stay, stay sturdy in what I believe in and encourage her to keep mm -hmm. pushing. Um, on the flip side of that, I'm gaining every piece of business knowledge that's important because I'm clear now. I'm clearing my mind, I'm clearing my being so I can absorb more. While I got all these brothers around me that's facing times, doing life in prison, ain't coming home, trying to get home, whatever it may be, just wilding out, doing whatever they want to do. I'm literally in the matrix of this place like, yo, nah, I can't get sucked in, I can't get absorbed. Chicken days, popping everybody eating chicken, mm. greasy fingers. Yeah. I'm sitting in the corner like, oh man, she would have, I got to go, I got to go do something, you know. Um, um, and I just wouldn't go back, though, because I knew the elevation in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fast forward today, the elevation was worth it. Yeah. Right. It, it was worth it. It was worth those 18 months sticking to it and coming home and getting back right back to it. It was worth it. Yeah. That's so, key. So when we talk about wealth, that's where the wealth came from. Yeah. I also think that, you know, we got a lot of blockages. We can be thinking right, but if we're not eating right, then it can cancel out some of that. The same way, you know, if we eating right and we not thinking right, it can cancel out that. Same way, like if you doing those two things, but you got trauma, it can still cancel out your ability to magnetize things within your life. So for me, flushing out and letting go of those things allow you to be more clear mm -hmm. and allow you to be a better receiver, you understand me, and a better magnifier and a magnetizer of the <laughs> things that you want to <laughs> attract within your life. So doing those deep cleanses especially for us we are a very spiritual and emotional people mm -hmm. so those things that attaches to our spirit and our emotions you understand me they make us heavier mm -hmm. right and it's harder for us to go move throughout the day we try to keep ourselves as busy as possible without thinking about those things that's attached to us but at some point in time they're, they're just right there we never leave them no matter how fast you run they're always with you Correct. but you can get so busy that you start to ignore them yeah. right and then you get those moments where it's like, all right, now you weak though. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I caught you at your weak moment. Now they, they back loud again. Now mm -hmm. you can't handle it because you've been ignored instead of training and instead of preparing yourself either to get rid of them. Yeah. So this is how, you know, them spiritual, them emotional, them traumatic attacks weigh on us more and more and more. And we can't ignore those things through life. Like, you know, the one thing I, I believe that I have that most people don't have is the ability to consistently face whatever, mm -hmm. the truth of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I can do that when... Because I'm going to be honest with myself, and I'm always trying to see what is the raw, honest truth mm -hmm. about myself. You understand me? About who I am, right? I would never want to go out in the world, and the world is complimenting me about things that I don't believe about myself. Mm -hmm. You understand yes, me? Yeah. Then that's when that imposter syndrome starts to set in. That's when you start to feel hypocritical and delusional. So I always want to make sure that, yo, when I'm by myself, I'm happy about that person. You understand me? Like, I respect that person. And some people are afraid to spend that time alone because they know that they don't respect that person in the mirror. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And then that voice starts to come up. Those problems start to come up. So, no, I need to distract myself, whether it's television, whether it's social interaction, right, whether it's drinking, whether it's consistent flooding of dopamine and mm -hmm. drugs, whether it's the food, right? Because most people find they try to heal themselves through food, but they're eating junk. Correct. Mm. Right? Correct. Mm. So they're getting that dopamine, you know, it's feeling good, they're addicted to it, but it's making them worse. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nobody should be out of shape. And that's just the fact <laughs> of life. Some people got these big old kids. Man, kids be huge. You ever seen them little mm -hmm. wobbly kids? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They got to buy them extra large shirts by the age of like three. It or or no how sense. about like people always comment on, oh, your child should be, you need to fatten them up. Like That's it's crazy. a culture. The culture is sick. Yes. The culture is sick. Culture it's, is bloated. The, the culture is bloated. The culture is constipated. Uh -huh. Right. The culture is inflamed. Mm -hmm. And we think that it's normal. It's become normalized to right. be have the chunky babies now of course you don't want your baby malnutrition but your baby don't have to be six months 20 pounds oh, it should, your child should not be overweight right that early obesity and that habit of junk food eating right that's going to carry on through the rest of their life right? mm -hmm. what a mother eats yeah. <clears throat> while that child is being born right that child is now it has been proven that that child can taste those flavors, some some strong flavors in the womb. Yes, correct. Right, and then once he starts to eat, <laughs> you know, that's my right there. Now you start to eat, and that junk food becomes an addiction, right? Mm -hmm. But they, of course, know this because the marketers want to target pregnant women. Therefore, you have a customer for life when that correct. child has those cravings. Mm -hmm. So now you think it's innocent the same way we don't understand that these iPads is the same as junk food. Mm -hmm. You understand me? You, you are creating a habit that's going to be iPads detrimental the for them for the rest of their food. life because it's junk viewing, because mm -hmm. it's not good food for thought. Mm -hmm. It's food for distraction. You understand me? And it's the same thing with the food that we eat. And you're not really trying to extract the problems. You're trying to distract the problems. Correct. You dig? So when I see obesity and 50% and, and of America is obese and we got all these underlying issues and conditions with our livers, our heart, our spleen, our spine. You understand me? Aching knees, back, mm -hmm. all of these things. We're told that that's normal. That's not normal. That by 30, that... You understand me? Your body starts to break down. You start to look like you're 60 and you only 18. <clears throat> these kids look old as hell these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's not cool. Now, uh, the weight loss with women. You understand me? I know this is probably one of the, the biggest things in the world when it comes to women, period, right? Um, is their ability to find a proper diet to lose weight. You understand mm -hmm. me? Some women, they, they be doing what they consider to be everything. Yet that weight is stubborn. Mm -hmm. You understand me? It's like a Taurus. It mm -hmm. just won't, <laughs> just won't change. That's <laughs> a Taurus. <laughs> I'm a Taurus. I can make Taurus jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else can do that. Uh, no, but seriously, there's a lot of women that want to lose weight, and they like, I hear y'all, but shit, I done tried everything. I had on the sweat bags. I took the tummy mm. tea. I ran the block. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't ate in 17 days, and I still feel like I'm big. Mm. So, but what is your particular advice on? You know, a, a woman working to lose weight for mm -hmm. herself. Before you say, before you answer, she bat. We all battle with that weight aspect. Like mm -hmm. even her from the from the aspect of being small <laughs> to being big. 
mm-hmm. in both aspects, and she battles that as well. So I definitely want you to give a real breakdown from both perspectives. Okay, I could definitely give give that breakdown. Um, what helps me um, to first of all, a lot of women have just a negative self image, so you need to repair that. You need to tap back into your femininity, right, and understand that because as a strong black woman in that narrative, we're constantly in our masculine energy. So we're constantly being critical. That's the sign of masculine energy, right? You're constantly on the logical side of the brain. That's masculine energy. You need to get into that rest phase. You need to get into the alkaline phase, which is femininity. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's one, just so that you can uh, not be critical of self and understand, like I said earlier, it's a journey, not a destination. If you feel like I need to be 50 pounds uh, less by May, you make it into a destination mm-hmm. instead of a journey. Hmm. Right. So, for example, one of our uh, assistants, her name is Isis. She understood that it was a journey. I think she was over 250 pounds in one year. She lost 140 pounds. And the one thing that I taught her was this is a waste loss. Hmm. You're removing waste from your body. And waste is not just about, okay, releasing poop. That's one thing that's beautiful. What about the waste that's in your environment? Hmm. What about the waste that's in your mindset? So that's why I mean when I say it's a journey. Because you're going to have to come to terms with maybe letting some people go. Mm. Maybe breaking up with some old habits. Mm. Maybe releasing some old environments. That's key. So she had to go on that journey and she's seeing success, continued success. And the weight is staying off because she's changing her environment. She's changing her mindset, the way she thinks about food, the type of people that she keeps in her circle, the type of things that she engages with. So it's a waste loss journey. Mm. So, yeah, we can do the things. We can do like high that. fiber to get you started. You start with a high fiber uh, detox. Go three days, pick a fruit or vegetable one. You ain't got to overcomplicate Whichever it. Whichever fruit or vegetable you want. High in fiber. Fast on that for three days. Drink mm. a gallon of water every day. Chlorophyll water is the best. Yeah. All right? A gallon of chlorophyll water every day. Fast on the high fiber fruit. It's better to blend it. So blend it with the chlorophyll water and drink it. Once you blend it, you will see white foam at the top. That is the uh, insoluble fiber. Drink that. That waist gonna move right on out. Mm. You gonna be pooping like none other. Yeah. But if you come off of that detox and you haven't it don't, exactly removed the waste from your mind, as soon as you come off of that detox, you are gonna be stuffing your face. And right. It's back. Or remove the waste. That, around that you said around something you. so key, and that's self image. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe that that's more important than anything throughout the entire process. Mm. If you can't see yourself in a different image than what you are. Right, then you can't become anything else but what's in your mind. Right. Mm-hmm. right? So some people's self image is the big person. Mm-hmm. So even when they start to slim down, they get back to their self image. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you have to modify your self image and visualize it first. Mm-hmm. Right? And so once you start to do that type of work, it's like, you know, if you broke, you have to uh, uh, create a better self image of somebody who has money, somebody who is in these Correct. luxury environments, somebody who can afford things, right? Because otherwise, when you get money, it's going to your habits are of a poor man, so it's going to eat that money up and you go lose it. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing if you have a big girl self image, right, and big girl habits, you might lose the weight for a little second, like but the them big girl habits go eat that plate up, <laughs> yeah. and now you right back into your image because that's what you see of yourself. Correct. 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 So I think that the psychological part is probably the, the bigger thing that most people are dealing with, and when you talk about getting rid of waste. Understanding that all of that fat that is on top of you, right, especially when, oh, this five pounds is because you broke up with somebody. Mm -hmm. This five pounds is because of trauma. This five pounds is because of work stress, right? So now your hips is over here. This is your work hips. This the last boyfriend. (laughs) This the current one. This the family that's on your back. That's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna put that in the post. Listen, <laughs> post. you that. got you got a, your your body is built on your problems. Yeah. Correct. So in order for you to release Ooh, some of those weights, you have to release. You know, in order to release the weights, you got to release the weight. You understand me? And so it's like one thing I, I started in my life was forgiving myself in any in every moment in my life. Beautiful. Mm. Right? Because that's my way of releasing things. Right. Because when we don't forgive ourselves for things or others, we hold on to them. Correct. We saying that, no, I'm going to keep this close. Yeah. You I ain't want letting to be this mad. go. You want that, to be mad. We say it. I ain't letting this go. I ain't letting shit go. Yeah. That's what we say in the hood. I ain't yeah. letting nothing go. No, I forgive it. I'll let it go. I don't forget it. It don't mean that you still not going to catch repercussions. You might mm-hmm. catch some hands for it still. Mm-hmm. I might let them go. You mm-hmm. understand mm-hmm. me? But <laughs> you got to get to a place where, you know, all of the things that 
make you put on the weight you let go of. Correct. So the mentality that makes you overeat, the mentality of things that you unbalance and you overcompensating for, right? You have to let all those things go and you start to shed that self. Mm -hmm. And everybody has a true self, mm -hmm. right? It's like getting abs is more so you know, letting go of the fat. And they always under there. It's you just can't there. see them. Mm -hmm. It's always there. There's a body that everybody has that they can't see. Mm. You understand me? And so you never really get to see your true self. You see all of your problems, issues, stress, overeating, anxiety, traumas. And that's the body that you have. The mm. body that the world has put on you and all your issues. It's a representation of your mind. You dig? So, like, getting to that self-image forgiving yourself, going through that process of understanding your wives and understanding what does this weight even represent in my life. Mm -hmm. You understand me? It's representing that trauma in your relationship. You understand me? That bad self-image of who you are, your insecurities. Let that go. Now go on your journey of detoxing.